Welcome back to another episode of Overcoming Overwhelm. I am your host, Sam Kaber, and with me is Alicia Kay. Thank you so much for being here, Alicia. If you guys are new to this show, please go back to the first episode so that you have the foundation because it will make so much more sense. Alicia is not in the promotional products industry. She's a good friend of mine that I've met through uh, being a mental health advocate and helping people with their overall well-being. Alicia, is a licensed trauma therapist trauma therapist and her and myself are both actually certified somatic breathwork practitioners as well alicia thank you so much for being here in this episode we're going to be talking about the second step of the six step breath process which is the framework i'm teaching in my brand new book called overcome the overwhelm so to recap Last week, or last episode, I should say, we got into the first step, which is noticing how you feel in any given moment. When you notice that, oh, wow, all of a sudden, now I'm triggered, and I'm feeling stressed, or maybe I'm feeling sad, or maybe I'm feeling anger, whatever the emotion is, instead of grabbing pistachios, if you're anything like me, and hovering over a trash can and starting to crack pistachios and binge eat so you don't have to feel it, Instead, what I'm inviting, what we're inviting you to do is to relax and to feel this emotion, which is the second step of the acronym breath, relax to feel. Now, I mentioned this briefly on the last episode of this little mini series, but our bodies actually have a 90 second physiological response when we experience an emotion. Let me say that again. Our bodies have a 90 second physiological response when we experience an emotion. Well, isn't it so much easier that instead of feeling stressed and going to pistachios and binge eating those for five minutes sometimes, because I do do that. And I know we all uh, go to food a lot. It's very relatable. Wouldn't it be a lot easier to just not necessarily put on a timer for 90 seconds, but just maybe to sit down for a second, close my eyes, get to step one, let me breathe to slow down, to be with what's here, and then let me get into the second step and really soften and relax into the feeling so that I allow myself to feel what's coming up to the surface. Doesn't that seem a lot easier if emotions are energy in motion so they wouldn't be stuck and stored in the body? Alicia, what's coming up for you when I, I mention all that? Oh gosh, so much. <laughs> I love the concept of the pistachios because mine used to be chocolate. It was any single time my son would get out of bed and didn't want to sit in his bed, I'd put him back in his bed and then I'd go to the freezer and I would grab a piece of chocolate. And it really occurred to me, it was like, okay, well, if I'm teaching this to my clients, right? It's identify the feeling first. What am I feeling like when my son gets out of bed? oh, well, I'm feeling stressed, I'm exhausted, I'm overwhelmed, right? The chocolate doesn't solve the problem. The pistachios don't solve the problem because it makes us feel better in the moment, but then comes the shame dump afterwards, right? Like we get into this process and we start to get into our brain about what we did and then we judge ourselves and we we get into the shame, the shame bucket. So I love the idea and what I ultimately teach and preach and practice is identify the emotion first. And then when you're conscious and you're aware of what it is that you're feeling, you can make a different conscious choice with what to do with that emotion. And it may still be the chocolate and it may still be the pistachios, but at least you are aware and you are in your power state of I'm still going to make that choice. And I'm not running on an uh, unconscious habit or program that doesn't feel good to me. I love that. That's awesome. And you know, for me, when I first started doing this work, I was very disconnected to my feelings. And I'm sure uh, since you're a therapist and we're in similar lines of work, you work with many people as well that are disconnected with their feelings. One thing that helped me was uh, getting this little kid type uh, mat, uh, refrigerator magnet thing that I'm sure we could make in the promotional products industry. And that would be a great product for me to have, by the way. But it's basically like a how do you feel magnet? It, like with different emotions and then you pick off one and then you place it and it's like oh wow okay now that helps me to look at maybe like 10 options of emotions be like oh yeah that's what i'm feeling that's right Do, is no, that something that. yeah 
Yeah, I'm about to go grab my feelings wheel because I have people, um, I, I have it next to my my chair, but it is a colored wheel and it has at least a hundred different emotion on, on it, emotions on it. And so when people are really out of tune with what they're feeling because they just don't, they just haven't had that taught to them or they don't have the language to describe what they're feeling emotionally, it is a skill to learn how to do that. And having that object that you can actually look at or point to, which you can download a feelings wheel online, they're super, it's cheap, super free, but it's like, what am I actually feeling right now? Oh, it's this, it's this, it's this, and it makes sense. But what we're talking about is when a lot of emotions are happening at the same time, the brain reads that as overwhelm or it reads it as anxious. And then you just want to shut down. So I love the idea of getting the language behind how to describe what's going on in the body, right? That's step one. And then continuing to put that into practice and to play with that, because it is something that does need to be learned. If there is a part of you that actually cuts yourself off from the awareness of your emotion based on old stuff and things that happened to you. Yeah. Something you said there was um, one thing that I failed to include in the initial first episode, but overwhelm is a signal. You know, so often we say overwhelm, but it, it, what does that actually mean? It's just like, oh, I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. All right. Or even I'm stressed. But if you start to unpack this and you go deeper, you start to realize, oh, wow, there's something there. And we're going to get into that in the next episode. I am wrong, Burgundy. We're going to get the, into that into the next episode. That's a little bit better. With that, though, we do have another call to action for you guys. So this isn't just theory and you can actually put this to practice in the first episode. So the first step, breathing to slow down. We talked about being intentional with your breath. Even right now, as I tell you what this next one is, just focus on your inhales and exhales. Just long inhales and even longer, slower exhales. And the more you practice that, you're actually training your body to slow down. That will shift you into rest and digest. That is the parasympathetic nervous system. With that said, your call to action for this one is something called the cyclic sigh. Now, Dr. Andrew Huberman is a big time podcaster. He's also a neuroscientist professor at Stanford and leads Stanford's lab. They did a study to find out what form of breath work and or meditation would be most effective to relieve stress, anxiety, and you guessed it, overwhelm those things, right? And what they found was the practice of the cyclic sigh is more effective than any other form of breath work that they compared it to and meditation to relieve overwhelm, stress, and anxiety. So the best part about this is I, I've done, I'm certifying two different types of uh, yoga. One is called Kundalini, which if, if any of you guys know about Kundalini, that is some wild breathing. The best part about this cyclic sigh is out of all the different breathing exercises I've ever done is the easiest to do. All you do is through your nose, you inhale all the way up. Then you sip in a bit more air at the top through your nose and through the mouth, exhale. One of those is called a physiological sigh. When you do it repeatedly, it becomes the cyclic sigh, right? Cyclic like cycle. So basically a few housekeeping notes. This isn't as important because what I'm most concerned about is that you inhale through the nose all the way up and sip in a bit more through the nose at the top, then through the mouth, exhale. So some additional tips though would be when you inhale, let your belly expand. Now, right 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 now go ahead and inhale and just notice for yourself if your belly comes in or it goes out for myself years ago and for a lot of people i work with when they inhale their belly comes in and there's two main reasons for that one if you think about like inhaling through your nose you bring something in so it kind of just like neurologically makes sense to bring your stomach in the second part is so many of us are concerned about how we look and to suck in our gut, right? We don't want to expand and be proud. So this is an opportunity to really expand your belly. So on that inhale, let's try again, inhaling through the nose. Notice if your belly expands, sipping in a bit more at the top, then exhale, let it go. So on this next one, through the nose, inhale, let the belly expand, bring it all the way up. 
sipping a bit more at the top. Now through the mouth, exhale and drop the shoulders and bring the belly to the spine. This is like getting into advanced work. I talk about more in the book and, and different YouTube videos. And when I work with people for right now, what I'm most concerned about when you practice the cyclic side is to inhale through the nose all the way up about 90%. So pretty much all the way up, sipping a bit more, hold for a couple seconds, then through the mouth, exhale. If you can get the belly expanding on the inhale and then bring the belly back to the spine, that's like some CAS, MAS, like extra credit type stuff. That is incredible if you're doing that. So that's what we have for you in this episode. Remember, this is the second step, which is all about relaxing to feel. You can find more about the book at my website, samkabert.com, and you can connect Connect with Alicia at her website, Alicia K Coaching. That is K spelled out K A Y, Alicia K Coaching.com to connect with her. And thank you, Promo Corner, for hosting this show. Thank you guys so much.